Welcome to Home Gym History. On this episode, I have Scott, the CEO of Body Solid, a company that's been around for 30 plus years. If you haven't caught the episode of Garage Gym Experiment podcast with Scott from Body Solid yet, go listen to it. You don't have to stop this episode and go listen to it. You can listen to this first. This is going to be the history of Body Solid. But the reason I think you should go out there and listen to GGE podcast with Body Solid is that they get into some of the home gym trends and some of the differences and the changes over the years. And it is pretty cool to hear Scott talk about some of these things and hear him talk about leaning forward where he sees the company going and where he sees the fitness industry going. I'm pleased to have him on my podcast, Home Gym History, to look back and talk about the historical context of Body Solid and some of the things that they've pioneered in this industry. But first, let me tell you about a product that is pretty much brand new. At the very end of 2023, I was happy to collaborate with Microgains and release Vintage Gains calibration plates. On the back of these little steel pieces that are made right here in the United States are very strong earth magnets. So what you do is you weigh your weight plates, you get over the shock and awe that they don't weigh what they should weigh, and then you pick up some Vintage Gains. They come in half pound and quarter pound increments, and you stick them on your plates so that you can calibrate your plates right there in the comfort of your home gym. It's affordable. It's easy. Why not? So head over to microgains.com and get yourself a pack of vintage gains. Now, with that said, let's talk to Scott about body solid. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Rob. Good to see you. You too. We talked on the phone, but it's always nice to, you know, put a face to a name. Absolutely. So recently, a couple weeks ago, you were on the Garage Gym Experiment podcast. How did that go? I thought it went pretty well. Uh, you know, I always love talking talking shop with uh, with those guys or anybody. And it's uh, it was a, it was a, I thought it was a fun uh, fun podcast. I like doing these. Yeah, it's uh, Jake's had a bunch of different um, companies come on the podcast over the past couple of years. So it's interesting to hear your perspective. And uh, I. <laughs> I laughed whenever you said that uh, it was might have been the first time that someone called you an industry veteran to your face. Yeah, I know. I well, you know, we all think we're younger than than we are, and then when when you're old enough to be an industry veteran, you're like, I wish I wasn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wish I was just getting started. Well, if it makes you feel better, I was just trying to find some old body solid ads in uh, like 1990s muscle and fitness magazines. Wow. And, and then I was crunching the math in my head. I'm like, oh my gosh, 1993. Yeah, that's 31 years. Like, geez, I did not. I just don't feel like it. I, the math kind of like mutates in my head sometimes. Actually, the math is 35 years. Yeah, there you go. 35. <laughs> yeah. It really mutates to an inaccurate yeah. place. Yeah, but, no, it's, uh, yeah. it's interesting because, uh, you know, I know you wanted to talk a little bit about our history today. Yep. And we, uh, for our 25th anniversary, did a, a, a very big uh, kind of party and everything else and had lots of lots of people together at, uh, at a nice venue here in Chicago. Oh, that's cool. And uh, um, reading some of that stuff is like just taking me back. It's, it's a lot of fun. I, I bet. And that's what I wanted to dig into here was uh, in terms of body solid, when you came to them as CFO, they'd been around for 15 ish years, About something like years that. At that time. Okay. So even though you weren't there for those 15 years over the past 20 years, I'm sure you, you have a pretty good knowledge of the founding of the company and what happened uh, to get it off the ground and make it what it was by the time you got to it. So would you mind recounting sure. that? Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a great story actually, and it's, there's three guys who originally founded the the, the company: uh, Earl Schreiberg, Steve Cooley, and Tony Ty. And uh, um, basically, Earl, uh, his background was on the retail side in fitness, and he had what we believe was the first specialty retail store in the Chicago area. It was called the Shape Up Shop, and I think he opened it uh, sometime in the late '70s, maybe. And uh, um, uh, he and his wife worked at it. Uh, and then separately, uh, Steve and Tony had been partners in uh, importing a couple of different uh, products uh, um, from from overseas, mostly from Taiwan, um, in the fitness business. <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, more related to like bars and things like that. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> Earl 
had been at one of the one of the uh, shows. I'm not sure which show it was. It probably was the old Super Show or something like that. And uh, uh, he uh, um, basically got kicked out of the Parabody booth, which uh, for those of you who don't remember <laughs> Parabody, they were uh, a company much like us back in the day, uh, um, but uh, they were acquired by uh, Life Fitness you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. I don't remember the time frame. It's quite the a while ago. And, the, the, brand, rack, the brand is consumed into Life Fitness, so I don't think it exists anymore. But uh, in anyway, dumbbell rack is pair body. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oddly enough, I have an old dumbbell rack, and it's pair body. And there you go. Yeah, people it's, stop it's, by the house that are like, "Oh, I never heard of that company." I'm like, "Well, it's, it's not it's around." The blessing. We'll talk about this later. I think it's the blessing and the curse of our <laughs> industry. The blessing is is that we offer great warranties because the stuff lasts a long time. Uh, the curse is, you know, it's hard to get somebody to buy a new one when the old one works just as good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, that's true. At any rate. Um, uh, Earl had gotten kicked out of uh, um, out of this particular booth and couldn't. You know, he was he was a small one one store retailer and having having a real hard time getting uh, uh, getting product. Uh, yeah. And he had been uh, buying a, a couple of things from Steve and Tony, and uh, the three of them got together and said, "Let's let's try and do something on our own." And uh, and they started making product. Uh, their, their very first product was a bench that, uh, this will dated a little bit. I think it was, uh, it had burgundy upholstery, uh, and nice. uh, I believe it was, it was gray or silver. Uh, but, uh, that was the first product they put together. That was in, uh, 1989 that they had officially incorporated, uh, body solid. Uh, we had a couple of different funny names, uh, but we, you know, now we're body solid incorporated, uh, we're body <laughs> solid fitness equipment and other things, what have you. But, uh, and uh, um, from the early days, uh, they had a separate company uh, uh, back then called Bodybuilders Discount Outlet, uh, today called Fitness Factory Outlet. But uh, um, and they would uh, they would sell mail order back before the Internet uh, became a thing. And uh, um, uh, basically, as that, you know, that business began to develop, they came out with more and more products. And, and I think that what Body Solid did in that period of time uh, that really kind of put, our, put us on the map was we took uh, products that were, you know, in the relatively well known in the commercial market, things like half racks, uh, Smith systems and what have you. And we brought them to the consumer, not in the, in the way that other consumer companies were in those days. You know, a lot of the consumer okay. equipment that was available in the, you know, in the early 90s was uh, relatively cheap, you know, it didn't have, you know, it was not high profile tubing. It was all square. It was, you know, it was pretty, pretty basic, uh, basic uh, equipment. And what they did was try to, you know, come out with products that were equivalent to the experience you might get in a, in a, uh, in a commercial environment. But, you know, brought it to the to the home environment in an affordable way, but also in a very high quality way. And, and that's really laid the, the seeds for the way we've conducted ourselves for all of our 35 years is, you know, trying to bring really nice. Uh, you know, we obviously sell a lot of commercial products that are truly high, you know, full full level commercial today. But back in those days and really until probably about the late 1990s or early 2000s, you know, we were very home focused and, and, and today we still have obviously sell a ton of, of, of home f uh, focused equipment. But um, and, then, you know, we were the first ones to bring a, a you know, a linear bearing Smith into, you know, into the into the home market. Uh, you know, the, the first that, that did a half rack for the home market, uh, you know, our own power flex gym. Uh, and uh, um, and as I mentioned, that's 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 the way we've done it. And they, and they did a great job growing the business. Uh, got to the point of, you know, when, when I was brought in, uh, there, there were not financial problems, but uh, some, some uh, uh, poor organization just needed, we need, they needed a financial officer. They'd been using an outside accountant, uh, mm. you know, and that, that never works. It works fine when you're a small company, but it's, it never works long, you know, as you get grow bigger and they, they were getting bigger. Uh, we were getting bigger, excuse me. And uh, so I was the first truly, you know, financial guy that they ever hired. And I came in with a very strong operations background as well. And so, uh, you know, uh, I was able to, you know, fairly quickly, you know, make my mark and get their trust and, uh, and myself and my current partner. Uh, basically, a year after uh, I got there, uh, the three of them decided that they wanted to step back. Uh, they, they said, <laughs> we're going to either bring in a professional CEO or give you guys a chance to to do it. We put a business plan together and said, this is what we'd like to do. And uh, they accepted it. And uh, that was in 2000, 
five, uh, and uh, and we've been running it like that uh, ever since. So let me ask you, that was something I was wondering about when we get up to this point where, okay, now you've got this opportunity in front of you. The, the original founders are ready to step back a little bit and they're letting you know that we'll give you a shot at this or we can look for a CEO. Um, and am I interpreting that correctly that you would have stayed on in that scenario as CFO? Uh, you never Potentially, know. Potentially, <laughs> you never know. Okay. <laughs> We ne- I never had to ask that question. It was well, pretty, that, I they, guess they so, never, yeah. really they gave us the opportunity. And if yeah, they, and said, they had said no, uh, you, know, my, you know, I joined them not thinking that I was going to become CEO. Uh, yeah. I did join them thinking that we were going to have a, a, a lot of fun, you know, building a company further, organizing a company, making it more professional and so forth. And, yeah. and uh, so I was, you know, I was pleased that that happened a year ago. And, I'm, and I still thank the three of them for giving, giving me the, the opportunity that they have. Uh, and I've, you know, I've loved every minute of it. Well, uh, where, did you have any nerves? Uh, oh, you yeah. know, what was the decision like? Because that that's pretty weighty, uh, no pun intended, after only a year with a company that Oh, and I mean, you were going into it with a partnership mindset. Yeah. Um, you weren't alone, so I'm sure that helped. But, you know, what was your business plan like, if you recall? What what was your feeling at the time? You know, I had been there long enough and I had enough business experience up until that point in time. And, and quite honestly, that some of the business experience I had had prior to uh, Body Solid was in some troubled companies that really needed some uh, some uh, tender love and care. <laughs> uh, that, that, the you know, body solid, just, you know, the, the elevation of responsibilities, the, the, the scariest thing for me was I was a, a novice of the fitness industry. I mean, I, you know, I was a, an athlete when I was in high school and college and had always been, you know, kept active, but had never really done other than when I was in high school and college, uh, under formal programs had not done a lot of fitness training. Uh, and so I, you know, I really felt like I was, you know, uh, weak on that side, but strong on the business side. So I, you know, I needed to develop my abilities along that line. At the same time, I also knew, you know, the, for example, the body solid sales force that was in place at that point in time, uh, you know, about 60% of it is still with us today. Wow. And at that point in time, you know, you, you know, I've been with the business 20 years. These guys have been with it 30 years yeah. uh, or longer. Uh, some of them, there's one in particular that's been with us 35 years since the very beginning. And these guys know the fitness business so so darn well that I can lean on them, and, and I still do today. I mean, I, I will I will fully admit that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm I I know a lot about the fitness industry, but I'm not nearly as knowledgeable about specific equipment as those guys are, and and, and they're they're I rely on them heavily uh, in, in our product development team and so forth when it comes to product, uh, uh, new products and and what have you. Absolutely. I can imagine with a company of the size of Body Solid, it takes more than one person to run it. So Absolutely. It's always a team. So I heard on Garage Gym Experiment, Scott, something that I didn't know about Body Solid that, you know, there are several lines under the umbrella, if you will, of Body Solid. So, and you mentioned earlier here in our conversation, you know, commercial versus home gym equipment and equipment geared towards the homeowner. Which one of these lines do you think over the years has changed the most or is in the process of changing even now uh, while you've been with Body Solid? Well, that's I would say probably only because it's what we have done more recently. It would be the commercial side of our business. Uh, We we focused very heavily on the home side of the business until, you know, probably the I mean, we, we had commercial products, but. We really started uh, uh, develop, developing the commercial side of, the, of our business uh, um, early 2000s uh, up until you know now, and we continue to a lot of the products that we come out with are they're either commercial or they are like the at the the body solid premium home line, which can be light commercial as well gotcha. uh, in some situations. Um, you know, completely new to us uh, in the last probably 15 years is our line called Body Solid Tools. Uh, which is, you know, all of the accessories and things like that. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, we, we had always so- sold iron as more as a, as a favor to our dealers. It was, you know, it was, it was easy for them to get it from us. And, um, you know, there, and there still are some, there were then, and there still are some very good high volume uh, um, iron dealers, but uh, it was kettlebells actually, which, uh, you know, kettlebells have been around for, you know, I think uh, since the 1800s, oh, okay. if not longer than that, uh, you know, for and, sure. and, and, and it was in the early 2000s, they kind of had a little uh, renaissance and, and started mm-hmm. becoming more and more 
popular in fitness programs. There was, uh, you know, some, some uh, uh, fitness programs like uh, uh, gyms and stuff that came up at that time that were specifically related to kettlebells. And so we said, you know, let's, let's come out with kettlebells and we came out with kettlebells and they, and they did amazing. I mean, you know, yeah. and, you know, and then we, you know, we were, you know, we still bring in probably a, you know, a container uh, uh, or two a month of, of kettlebells and, 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 and we sell them obviously. Uh, and we're like, well, okay, that worked out pretty well. Let's, you know, let's think about expanding the accessory line. And, you know, we already had a full line of iron that we were selling in bars. Uh, and so we started adding things like, you know, medicine balls and fitness bars and, uh, um, uh, you know, stability balls, jump ropes, you know, pretty much, you know, everything. And what happened about the same time, and you ask what changed, and this is not really a product change, but it's really a market change, is when the internet started getting to be a big thing. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, what we've, what we did then and what we still do today is we really offer, whether it's a dealer uh, buying product for their, for their showroom or, and their customers, or whether it's an online uh, a consumer who's buying through one of our dealers, um, or on Amazon or something like that, we offer the ability to, to, to do a one-stop shop. Basically, you know, we're, we're, you know, if you, if you want to fit, you know, fit out a complete gym, uh, you can get everything from us, um, on, you know, a couple of pallets and that's more like a commercial side. But if you're a, you know, if you're a consumer and you think you need, you know, you're, you're working with a personal trainer and they say, Hey, listen, you ought to pick up a jump rope, uh, you know, a, a, a 20 pound medicine ball, a, a set of dumbbell, whatever you need. And by the way, you know, Body Solid sells them all. Yeah. One shipping cost. You know, you'll get them all. On, you know, at one point in time, you don't have to wait for them from five or six mm-hmm. different vendors. Uh, um, and then, you know, going to the dealer side, as we, as I think you know, we're we're very strong supporters of of uh, of our specialty retailer network throughout the the United States and the world. Um, uh, it, it, for them. You know, they can, you know, they just sold one of our home gyms. Okay, great. Well, that's, that's, that's going to go on the bottom of the pallet. What else do I need? Well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm a little light on my, uh, my, my ORT plates. Okay. Well, you put those on top and, you know, if you, if you ordered those ORT plates, you know, in a small quantity on their own, you'd pay mm-hmm. a lot of money to ship them. You put them on a pallet that we've already got ready for you. You're, it's, it's, it's going to yeah. be a nominal, you know, cost. it's already paid for actually the pallets already paid for, you know, we, you know, we're, we're essentially based in Chicago and we, you know, we can ship a pallet around the, in most, most places in the United States for very competitive rates, uh, which is one of the reasons we, we can stay in that business too, because uh, of our good shipping, shipping rates and our good location. Yeah. It makes sense that then you could stack on or, you know, whatever you can squeeze exactly. in there kind of thing, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, 2,500 pounds, you know, yeah. you're, you're up to 2000. What do you want to put on the next thing? You know, <laughs> so. Exactly. And you're, you're paying for the shipping anyway. So exactly. it benefits both parties, you know, yeah. you're making more sales. The, the retailer that's purchasing is saving on shipping. Right. Everybody's happy. And uh, I, and I touched yeah. on this too, you know, on the commercial side, when we're particularly if you're dealing with, you know, we, we, we're not dealing on the commercial side. We really don't sell it to the, the large dues paying clubs like, you know, an LA fitness or you know, mm-hmm. planet fitness or anything like that. But we're selling very heavily into the smaller studios, schools, uh, apartment buildings. Uh, um, and mm-hmm. uh, it's very typical in that scenario where, you know, they don't want to get five shipments of product yeah, and they don't want to get it today and the next five days. And you've got an installer who's waiting for everything to get there so you can get it installed. Well, you really want to get there all at once. And, and again, that's you know, something I think we offer that most of our competitors have a hard time doing, which is uh, you know, being able to ship all of that at once. And it's going to arrive on one pallet or if it's enough, two or three pallets. And, uh, and, it can, and, and you can get started and, and plan, your, plan your installation, which is you know, important to keep a com- commercial customer happy. Yeah, from that perspective, it makes sense. I we renovated our house a couple of years ago. It'd been a long time, a decade, saving up for it, and you know, having everything you need, you know, having everything the contractor needed to get the job done was oh, a yeah. bigger task at hand than I anticipated. So I can imagine installing a facility, even if it's a studio, or like mm-hmm. you said, an apartment building, a school. Yep. There's still that aspect to it that I can't do the job if I don't have the stuff. So yep. when it comes to the product development that you mentioned a moment ago and some of this growth that you've just talked about in terms of, um, you know, having these other products and things that, you know, you could add on or that you could complete or round out a gym with, is there anything that your product development team or that 
Body Solid has, uh, you know, released that you're particularly proud of, or that at the time you thought, wow, you know, this is a, an original take on this kind of uh, product. You know, that's a, that's a hard one because you brought out so many products that I'm proud of over the years. Uh, obviously, I love the fact that we've, we've been able to uh, develop a portfolio of products that is uh, broad and, and, and not st stupidly broad. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's broad. you know, you, you can go really far, you know, a field in the fitness field, you know, I mean, we've stayed away from things like, uh, um, uh, supplements, which are fine. I'm just, you know, it's just, you know, or clothing and, and things like that. And we really stuck to our, uh, stuck to our, uh, our, uh, our guns on, on really equipment and fitness accessories, like I talked about, like jump ropes and things. But, uh, um, you know, I, I, I am very, what I am very proud of is our product development team. And it's, and it's, it is truly a team. And we really, we only have a couple of people who actually have product development in their title. Um, and they're engineers and they're very good at what they do. And they do all the, the CAD CAM stuff and, and work with our, uh, our factories and what have you to, to build prototypes and things like that. And that's important. But before we get to that point in time, uh, we have, you know, for, for lack, I'll, I'll call it the brain trust. But, you know, I mentioned how experienced their sales <laughs> team is. Uh, and, and that sales team has so much history. Uh, and then we've got all our dealers also who, you know, most, most dealers, I'm sure you're aware, are, uh, you know, were originally enthusiasts, uh, are still enthusiasts. Uh, they, they weren't just a couple of guys who thought they could sell fitness because, you know, they knew nothing about it. Um, yeah. and, uh, uh, um, and, and they are a great resource. And so, you know, when we're, when we're looking for product ideas and when we're trying to come up with new products, we're, you know, we're bringing in every, and you know, everything we can. And, and, and then today we've got the, you know, you got to throw in the internet too. You know, you've got, mm -hmm. You know, we've got ideas coming in on comments, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, reviews, uh, online reviews of our product that say, well, I don't like this about it or I love this about it. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, people, you know, sharing their thoughts on, you know, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok yeah. and whatever it might be. Is organic uh, feedback and, just coming and, to and, you. And podcasts right here. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's, and, and it's, and it's a, it's a fun process. And I would be honest with you, we take all the, all the external stuff that we get, whether it's ideas from, from dealers, uh, things that come in over line, what, you know, whatever it might be, consumer ideas. Uh, and then the, the brain trust, <laughs> which uh, I, I hope that's not a bad name for them because th these guys are just so good and so smart at what they do. And they're all, you know, they spend all day literally talking to dealers anyways and go out to see them and, and are, 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 are learning so much about what, what, our, what the consumers want out of products. And so then we put that, uh, you know, and, and we, have a product development meeting, uh, uh, idea meeting, I guess I'll call it probably, uh, every three to four months. And we, we you know, we talk about what we've been doing. Uh, you know, we do a lot of it's giving updates as to where we are on certain existing products that we're, we're developing. Um, and then there's the, there's a, you know, throw 50 ideas on the, on the screen. And, uh, and then at the end of that time, we might come out with, you know, you know, somewhere between five to 10 that we really think are, are ones that, for some reason, we want to come out with them. They, you know, they, they fit a niche. They uh, could be also be a change to an existing product. Mm. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, a lot of it is just, it, it's getting those ideas and synthesizing them into a cohesive strategy. And it's, and it's, it is difficult because we do get a lot of good ideas, um, you know, from all of our different sources. But then at the end of the day, we can only pursue, I mean, we still come out with somewhere around, you know, 20 to 25, uh, uh, new products in every year. Uh, but that's, and that's a lot of work, uh, and particularly, you a know, lot of products. COVID, it, was, yeah. it was very hard to do. Uh, and it's, you know, we, it, we managed to keep it up, although the time frames extended a little bit more, but, uh, uh, but now we're back to more normal, normal process. And, uh, um, and it's fun. We've always got, you know, uh, just today we, you know, we, we've got a new uh, prototype in that we're, we're, we're building and we're, you know, as soon as it's built, we've got, you know, five or six people hovering around it and looking at it <laughs> like, oh, that looks great. And this looks great. And, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, it'll, we'll, 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 you know, chew it up and spit it out and say, okay, we'll make four or five changes to it. Yeah. And then we'll, you know, and then we'll start going into production, but uh, it's, it's, it's a fun process. Sorry, long, long winded answer. <laughs> no, don't be sorry at all. I love it because that's, uh, you know, I, I like hearing about the process. That's why I yeah. love talking to people from uh, the other side of the industry, if you will. Yeah. Um, 
because mostly I'm a consumer. I have a collaboration with Microgains, a small company that a product that we put out recently. Um, but that was my first dabbling with uh, product development, prototypes, things of that nature. And it was eye opening. Uh -huh. So it's interesting to hear uh, the entire process, you know, the team getting together, things like that. Yeah. So when it comes to uh, your products, the first thing I thought about and just kind of the nostalgia, if you will, of body solid with me personally, because I'm in Pittsburgh, so I'm not too far off from Chicago. So for the better part of my life, body solid has been around. It's a name that I've known. It's a name uh, that I've seen, you know, I go over to my uncle's house and maybe there's a home gym. Well, one of our best dealers is G and G fitness is based right near there. So there you go. And um, maybe there's a home gym sitting in the basement. And by the way, listeners, when Scott says home gym, and we're talking about a piece of equipment called home gym. We're talking about like a selectorized weight stack. Um, instead of free weights, maybe you have, you know, the handlebars that you do the bench press on, or maybe you yeah. have a, you know, a lat tower that's attached to it stations, if you will. Uh, kind of like the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but sort of like the, uh, the next uh, evolutionary step from universal gyms is the yeah, way that I always, I mean, I always kind of I mean, saw them. I didn't even realize it, but when I was, when I was like younger in high school and college, we worked out on universal gyms. I didn't yeah. realize it was a brand name. I thought it was just, they were universal, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was obviously a brand name that doesn't, uh, I think it still, st somebody still has it out there and is, might be making a few pieces of equipment underneath it, but it's, they're not, you know, they're not in, in our market directly now. It was hard to sort out. I recently looked them up because, uh, for, a, for a period of time, they made weight plates as well. And, yeah. Uh, I really enjoy weight plates. I restore them. I buy barbells, you name it. And they had a really interesting script and lettering on the weight plates, like almost a cartoonish universal. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, oh, is universal still around? And it was tough to figure out because it's exactly yeah. as you described. Um, it's a uh, website exists, but I'm not exactly sure what's taken place there. But what I wanted to find out from you was that uh, first of all, am I correct in the perception that that was like the bread and butter early on for body solid in terms of like your big product, a, a home gym, a multi station kind of function use piece of equipment that someone would use in the home or in a small commercial setting, whatever it might be. And if that is the correct perspective, you know, you're still making them. I just checked the website, yes. yeah. <laughs> but how has uh, that changed over the years? Or is there still a consumer base that enjoys a home gym product, a home gym machine that does it all? Well, home, home gyms are, are, are what, what, uh, you are correct in saying <clears throat> it was a big, big part of our growth. I mean, I, I mentioned earlier, I think the first product we ever made was a bench. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and, and we still make, I think we have 25 different benches we make today. Uh, nice. you know, and, uh, um, I was, mean to count them up and then forget but uh, <laughs> uh but the uh the, the home gyms uh were and still are a big part of our business but i think what's happened uh over the years and i touched on this a little bit in the uh in the uh the other uh, podcast was uh um you know we've we've really seen uh first of all the consumers have gotten uh a lot smarter and and intelligent on how to work out which has allowed things like functional training to become and functional trainers excuse me um, uh, to become a big part of the business. And they're, they are probably, at least for us, they outsell, uh, home gyms now. Uh, and then obviously the other thing is, and, and, uh, is that, that free weight training, uh, you know, was really, I think more, um, focused on, you know, football players, uh, you know, certain, you know, certain, core principles, you know, obviously bodybuilding, mm -hmm. you know, people who just wanted to build, build a lot of muscle. And, and I think that also evolved into a more balanced approach to weightlifting. That is not just about getting big and strong and being able to play football better. It's, it's about, you know, just overall conditioning. And, and, you know, you talk about uh, product development and, 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 and those, you know, one of the areas where we've really expanded quite a bit over the last uh, um, probably decade has been in, 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 in power racks. And, mm -hmm. and we now sell, you know, seven or eight different versions of power racks. Uh, and, uh, you know, our top of the line is our SPR 1000 series, which is a wonderful uh, a power rack. 
And, and the difference between power racks, you know, back then and today, it's amazing. Uh, you know, it, 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 I was thinking about this because you t said we might talk about this, but uh, yeah. you know, the analogy I kind of think of, and I, I hope this is not a dumb analogy because I always sometimes my <laughs> wife will be, you know, you don't know what they're talking about, but that's either <laughs> way, neither here nor there. But um, when I was a kid, when you went to the playground, there was a swing set that would have maybe five swings on it. There was a slide. There was a there was a jungle gym of some sort, and not a whole lot more. Today, you go to uh, oh. uh, go, go to you know, you've got these you know forts and bridges and you know fifteen different slides and, and <laughs> yeah. meets, it's like an amusement know, park. And, and I think yeah. power racks are almost the same thing. You know, I mean, power racks used to be you know four by four, couple of safeties. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, obviously the Smith was developed from the power racks, and and that and that is a whole different topic I won't get into, but. But, you know, you know, I think, the, you know, early when I joined the industry, people, there were already uh, uh, lat attachments were already very common as a as as a as an addition to a power rack. But um, our SPR 1000 series today, we have 30 different attachments that go wow. on to the basic rack, you yeah, know, everything from combining <laughs> two together to, uh -huh. you know, uh, storage products for for, you know, for weights and for for dumbbells or kettlebells. Uh, ball holders, uh, you know, plyo boxes. It just keeps going on and on. It's and I, like Tinker know, Toys, I, I, you know. I, I, this is another one where I, I actually did count it up. We've got 30 different attachments wow. for that product. <laughs> it, I mean, I own a, a power rack myself, and it is, it's like Tinker Toys. It's like, you know, a rector set, whatever kind of comparison you want yeah. to make, that you kind of do what you want. And I see in the home gym community, people get really creative. They, um, come up with storage solutions using extra uprights. They, yeah. you know, instead of configuring it this way, maybe they have three posts and they have a triangular kind of rack. They, they have all kinds of ideas that they do with their racks and with rack attachments and companies certainly are coming out with all kinds of things. So you know, what I think is interesting being um, kind of historically minded and just interested in the history of strength pursuits is the cyclical nature of things that mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned functional trainers. I mean, essentially you're, you're finding a way to put a, a weight stack in a power rack with yeah. a lot of the functional trainers. And I mean, it's not yeah. exactly like a selectorized system or a home gym system, but you know, it is in my opinion, a little bit cyclical that we're, you know, we kind of, the industry with CrossFit, the rise of CrossFit, things like that moved, into free weights, power X, you name it. But then now we're kind of coming full circle back to like, well, how can I get a weight stack in here? Yeah. So is there anything else that you see um, kind of coming back around or you see a product that maybe it was a little bit dormant, but now it's selling better? Um, anything like that? Well, that, that's a, that's a, um, I, 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 I agree that there are, you know, you know, for example, colors. Uh, I think uh, back in the mid nineties, our, our, uh, our product was, Oh, it's black. Okay. Then it became white uh, in the later nineties. Uh -huh. uh, then it was silver, and now it's back to black again. You know, that's interesting. <laughs> there that. are, you know, there you go. Uh, yeah. It's uh, you know, and and you know, so based on that, I should mm -hmm. start working on white product again pretty soon. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but you know, there's 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 definitely trends that you know, and what on that. Um, I, you know, um, it's interesting because I will say that. We we went through a, a period of time when we were like, let's put every bell and whistle on a, on a, on a particular <laughs> item if we can, yeah, and uh, and and let's sell it as a big package. And and all of a sudden, you you started out with, you know, you started out with something that was you know maybe you know five hundred you know seven hundred fifty dollars, and all of a sudden you had this package that was five thousand dollars. <laughs> you know what? It didn't sell very well. Not surprising. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, and and I think that um, you know that the, the, what people want is flexibility. They want mm. they want the ability to choose what they want. I mean, I say we have 30, 30 attachments. You could not put all thirty attachments on, True. you know, on, on a single you know single power rack. <laughs> you you would need to have a couple of power racks to do that. I would love to uh, see someone try. That'd be a yeah, great. Uh, it, it, it would be, be fun. A, it would be fun. But, I think uh, you need to speak know. to your social media team. They need to do that just for fun. That's a <laughs> well, great. Well, we do like, have a pretty good image of a double yeah. one of our double racks. Uh, okay. With a, monkey bars between it that's got yeah, yeah. a good portion of the stuff on it uh, <laughs> so nice. uh, I'll, I'll send you that after our after our meeting tonight but That'd uh, be great yeah but um uh you know uh, i i do think that 
you know, what I think is really more is a, it, there's an individual growth uh, within fitness. I think, you know, you, we talked about home gyms a few minutes ago. Home gyms are, are really good for a beginning fitness person, you know, from oh, yeah. a strength standpoint, because they're, they've got prescribed moment, movements. They're very intuitive and what have you. And then you move to functional training and functional training is, you know, it's, it's still very safe. It's got a lot of uh, adaptability and flexibility to do different exercises. And then, and then the individual moves into, to, to a more of a, a power rack and a, you know, I mean, they may never, you know, some people may never get past, you know, go from phase one to phase two to phase three, mm -hmm. but I think somebody who's truly committed will eventually get to the point where they want to have some free weight action somewhere in their life, even mm -hmm. if it's just a set of dumbbells on a bench. Uh, and, uh, and I, obviously that's something that we see. And so that's not cyclical as much as it's a, you know, it's somebody who's, you know, and sometimes it go the other way around. Like you may have been the, the biggest free weight guy in the, in the, in the um, universe. Uh, and then all of a sudden you have a baby, uh, and, uh, that child is running around your house and you're like, yeah. I don't know if I want 45 pound plates hanging around with my, yeah. with my kid around. So let's, you know, let's, sure. let's backtrack to a functional trainer or even a home gym for a little while. And then we'll see what happens down the road. But uh, um, but you know, what's next? I think, I think our industry is being more changed recently by programming than it is by mm. equipment uh, okay. innovation. I mean, there is some great innovation going around. There's a lot of neat new things that are, that are out there. Um, but I think that, you know, obviously connected fitness is, is a, a big part of, although it has not impacted the strength industry like it has in mm -hmm. the uh, cardio side. Uh, but, uh, but I do believe that, you know, um, going back to things like CrossFit and, and, uh, a lot of the various programming, you know, Peloton, obviously being a big one, uh, who's well known to everybody, but their programming has, has driven a lot of, of what has been enhancements connected fitness to, mm -hmm. to the, to the, you know, to the equipment market. Well, I mean, I could see that and agree with that, uh, the muscle and fitness magazine I brought up earlier, Weeder publications, yep. they, they relied on programming articles to then sell the product. And, yep. um, so I could see the connection there and that even not as expressly connected as a magazine publishing articles that then help to sell their product, just having the connection that, uh, programming trends. So like you mentioned kettlebells that, Kettlebells started to be programmed more, so kettlebells are selling more, you know? So that, yeah, uh, you know, that, that makes sense to me. Um, but getting back to Muscle Fitness Magazine and some of the, the first ways, it was mail order. It was a nice advertisement in the magazine with some people using the product that then the consumer might think, oh, I want to look like them. And maybe they'll place an order. Fast forward 30 years, we're sitting here in two different cities, talking over the internet, yeah, ha what a having, world, huh? you know, looking at each other. We're not even on the phone. Yeah. We're, we're looking at each other, having a video chat that's going to be recorded and then published out that people can bounce off satellites and listen to on their personal devices. Yeah. So other than the obvious of podcasts, how else has marketing and promotion changed over your tenure with Body Oh, boy, I tell you, it's, you know, it's... <sighs> It's difficult. Um, you know, there's, um, you know, I was asked what I think about, you know, some of the uh, companies like Rogue and, and you know, Reps and, you know, they're, they're great companies and they're selling directly. And so they advertise directly, you know, they, they send out emails, they do all the traditional stuff. Us as a, as a B2B, you know, we sell the businesses and don't sell direct to consumers at this point in time. Um, you know, we, it's, we have to work with our retailers as much as we can. And, uh, and and support them as best as we can and, and and help guide them. You know, so a lot of what we're doing from a marketing standpoint is developing materials that our retailers can use in their programs. Okay. That said, you know, we're doing you know like what everybody does. We're all over social media. You know, yeah. with multiple posts and you know in all the various uh, um, um, uh, platforms. But, uh, uh, you know, and then there's the, you know, and, and I know enough about retail is, I mean, it's difficult there, you know, there's, you know, trying to, to understand how to spend your marketing dollars. Uh, you know, in the old days, it was easy. You bought, you know, you bought a newspaper ad, you bought a magazine ad, you, you know, maybe you did radio or TV. 
Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't this thing called the internet that, that, that yeah. is, you know, awesome, but uh, can be a real suck of marketing money too. If you're, if you're as a company, not careful. And, uh, you know, and now it's all about, you know, buying the keywords, but there's, you know, literally an infinite amount of keywords, you know, <laughs> which ends. ones are the right. And, then there, and, it's, and, it's, and it's, how is your website written? And it's, and it's, you know, there, I mean, I, I'm not telling anything that, you know, most people don't know, but it's, um, yeah. it's challenging. It's challenging sure. to, to figure out how to spend your money in a, in a very, uh, in, in a good way. Uh, so I, I don't have a good answer for you, I guess. I think you touched on a lot certainly, of it. And, and, yeah. and, it, and, it, and, it, and I should, the only other point I'm going to say is, and it changes daily. You know, what, yeah. what worked yesterday doesn't always work today and sure. may not work tomorrow. And that, you know, that's frustrating as heck, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, when I entered the industry, it was pretty simple. You know, you you, know, you, you placed your weekly ads in the paper, you, you know, in the magazines and the monthly magazines. You, you know, you, you, you talk to your dealers, you may, you gave them, you know, uh, uh, you know, point of purchase stuff, you know, that they, you know, you know, in those days it was a big thing to have danglers and what have you on the product, which, you know, people still do to some day, but, you know, some, some point, but, you know, today it's more like there's a, there's a, you know, a, a QR code and they just look it up and say, oh, okay, here's all the information about the product that I need. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a, I mean, I think you touched on a lot of it. Just uh, if that first year when you presented that business plan to the original owners and then, okay, you and your partner are going to take over, would you ever thought that you'd be, you know, thinking about keywords and, I've got to hop on this call with this guy, Rob from Pittsburgh yeah, and, yeah. and chat well, and, and on a podcast, you know, it's a, yeah, it's well, a whole different it's just world. Been such a challenge in general, because, uh, you know, from our standpoint, uh, you know, when I joined the company, uh, it was distribution was very silo geographically silo based where, you know, we, we, we hold only had one or two dealers in a particular market and sold mm. only to them on an exclusive basis. Well, of course the internet doesn't respect, uh, markets, yeah. uh, geographical yeah. markets. And uh, so that had to change. And, uh, um, you know, and, and we've, you know, I, I like to think we've done a good job of balancing, you know, uh, supporting our, our, our good retail partners and still utilizing the Internet we, that, the way we all want to use it. Um, and it's it's but it's it's a challenge every every day. Well, it's interesting um, when I think through the retail side of things and think about like you said, a B2B, a business selling to another business instead of direct to consumer. Uh, but yet you're on social media trying to reach out and build that, you know, awareness, build the, brand. Yeah. build the brand, build that awareness so that when someone walks into that retailer, they're happy to see body solid. Um, right. Or maybe they even go to that retailer because body solids there. But with that in mind, uh, it makes me think of a recent trip that I made to York Barbell. So I stopped by York Barbell not too far from me, two and a half hours. I always wanted to go stop by, see the museum. And they were nice enough to take me around right away. They saw some weird guy in the parking lot with like old weights and things. Cause I met a friend of mine there. So, uh, the gentleman was, could not have been nicer. I can't say enough about him. And he, I mean, basically gave me a tour of the place, like unprompted. It was so kind. And I was like a, you know, a kid in a candy store looking through the museum. But then one thing that I thought of just now speaking with you was that when we went upstairs to the offices, I mean, it was so massive. It was basically when you look at York's building, it's shaped like the old York logo. If you look from a bird's eye view, it's a massive building. And that entire letter Y and entire upper floor uh, are offices that once was occupied once were occupied, I should say, mm -hmm. but there were maybe three or four people there and the rest of the offices are not occupied. And so clearly there's been a huge shift. Now in their case, it's a, you know, they're, they're owned by another company now, maybe, you know, most likely that's where staff are working, things like that. But it made me think to myself, as I was walking out of there with the gentleman, I just looked at this like, wow, there was, there was a time where, you know, this, this was packed. There was a time where, you know, the parking lot was full and mm -hmm. there was probably 200 people walking around these halls up here. So some of that too might also be remote work, things like that. So, you know, it's long winded, uh, intro to this question. So preamble, if you will. So thank you for indulging me. But what I'm wondering is how has that changed? How has, uh, you know, the work atmosphere of body solid changed over your time with them and with some of the things you've mentioned already on the episode, like mm -hmm. internet coming about and things like that. 
Well, obviously, computers have have you know computers were certainly around. You know, we've we've been able to you know as computers have gotten better and more you know more easy to use and what have you, we we just continue to grow along those lines. Uh, I wouldn't say you know our our employee count um, has not changed as much as you might think. Um, I think where we've added more people has most mostly been in our warehouse environment. You know, because mm. we just got more product going out. To, you know, and, and and the challenges of the warehouse today versus you know, uh, uh, 15, 20 years ago, uh, you know, you know, we have to be able to get out, you know, we have to compete with Amazon, you know, it's, you know, one day shipping on, on small items and, yeah. and, uh, um, you know, you know, two to three day shipping on, on larger LTL items. Uh, and, and we do very well at it. We've always been able to do that, which is fortunate, but, uh, that does require, uh, you know, probably more people than we did, you know, uh, back in the day. Um, and it's harder to harder to um, manage through the peaks and valleys. Uh, um, you know, for example, things are absolutely so crazy around the Christmas you know time, you know, Black Friday and what have you. And you know, and then you know, but then come summertime, things are a little bit slower in the fitness business, and you know, you have to plan for that. But uh, um, but I mean, it's and it's made life so much easier. I mean, one of the one of the things that I still do, partially because I it 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 it, it gives me a, a really good look at our our products what's selling what's not selling and things like that is like i i handle all of our our you know uh supply chain issues and hmm. and, and 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 our product ordering and you know i took it over from earl who i mentioned earlier who who had done it before me and earl did it uh you know mostly by hand you know we had yeah. we didn't have you know 800 products then we had quite a few less uh but um you know i you know i very quickly adapted it to more of a you know analytical function using uh, you know data and spreadsheets and what have you and and it takes you know still a, a, a fairly cumbersome job only because you there, there's you know there's a lot of math but there's a lot of art and you know that a lot of, a lot of science a lot of art but a lot of art that goes into it too because you got to say okay well you know uh it looks like we need more of this item but uh i got to remember that we we had you know a a, a double the normal uh, uh, last month because we had a huge order that went out or something like that. But, you know, there's, and it's, all, that's always a challenge too, but, but the, there's no way we could do what we're doing today if we didn't have, you know, the use of, of good data and spreadsheets. And, and we're actually in the process right now of, uh, of probably updating our, uh, we are going to be updating our ERP system and that's going to be cheap painful but yeah. actually going to bring us further even further along to where we are now today but uh um you know the 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 the, the needs to you know track a package mm -hmm. you know back in the day it was there was no tracking numbers there was you know it was it was uh um you just shipped it and you know waited and if it didn't show up you went to the carrier and said uh do you know where yeah. it is yeah. <laughs> yeah can you help us out here used to be exactly <laughs> okay it's left chicago it's on its way there it's on its way there and now okay and here you know, it's out for delivery. I should get it today. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, you know, I would say that particularly in some of the more like accounting, for example, and administrative functions, being able, you know, that we, we have not, you know, we've, we've increased people there, but not as much as you might think, given that we've, you know, probably doubled in, in, in our size in that period, you know, in that period of time. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other major changes, uh, uh, you know, obviously the ability to, to work remotely, you know, we're, we, we don't have too many, we don't really have, we only have one or two people who actually work remotely and they're all in sales. Okay. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, the ability to work remotely, I think will increase when we get into it. That's one of the reasons we want to go into a new ERP system as well. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and, and that, you know, that, that would be a nice thing to allow people to be able to, you know, do some of that if we can. Yeah. I mean, uh... I think stepping forward into some of the things you said on Garage Gym Experiment um, and some of the things you said here as far as, you know, programming, kind of inspiring the products, things like that, having that flexibility uh, might be nice going forward. Now, to close things out here, uh, Home Gym Con is coming up in April yeah. and uh, I'll be going out to Home Gym Con and I'll be doing uh, some live podcast episodes, things like that. And you'll be there. Uh, Body Solid will be there, I should say. I'm not sure if you'll personally be there, but Body Solid will be there. So I wanted to see if you could, uh, you know, give a little give a little sneak peek, if you would, for the listeners that are listening to us here for the last uh, 40 minutes about the history of Body Solid and look forward just a little bit to, uh, you know, what can they expect at Home Gym Con? Uh, do you have any kind of uh, idea in your head uh, well, ahead it's, of time? It's, it's 
I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about the show uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, and, and I, you know, I'm repeating a little bit of what I said on, on the last podcast with, with grad, grad ship experiment, but um, you know, it's, it's, there really isn't a good consumer facing fitness show right now there, you know, that most of the shows out there are more focused on, you know, certain types of users and really mostly commercial users uh, or their programming base, like, you know, uh, you know, the um, train the trainer sort of thing and, yeah. and what have you. But, uh, um, and so um, this, that's going to be a really interesting show. There's some, some really good companies that are going to be there along with us. Uh, you know, nobody has a very huge booth. It's not going to be, you know, another show that we do, the Ursa show, which is coming up in March. Uh, you know, you get some very, very large booths there that are, that are, you know, you know probably 60 by 60, wow. even bigger than that. Yeah. And, uh, um, and some of the big boys like, you know, Life Fitness and what have you will be there uh, doing that. But, um, uh, you know, this is this is mostly smaller booths. So we, we're, we're going to have, unfortunately, a fairly limited amount of equipment there. Uh, and it's and it's only the what the second year, or the third year of the show, second, the year. second year of the show. Right? Yeah, second yeah, right. year. So, yeah. But it's but, uh, you know, and I think they're double over double the size than they were last year already. We are. It's, and, uh, and if it's what we all hope it's going to be, yeah. it, it has real potential development to something pretty cool, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and, and we're excited yeah. to be there. I'm not saying you have to attach all 30 attachments to a rack at home, Jim Con, <laughs> but I, I, we are bringing, I'd we like are bringing that rack. Yeah. yeah I, I'd, like, bringing, I'd like to see that rack. Uh, that rack will be there and we'll, and yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have to look and see what you, t- I know we will have some of the, yeah, attachments some of the attachments. Sure <laughs> yeah, exactly. That I, I personally, I'd like to stop by the booth and see that rack, see some of the attachments. Yeah. You mentioned how you have uh, 20 plus different benches. I'd like to see a couple benches. Um, so yeah, listeners, if there's something you'd like to see from body solid, by all means, drop a comment and uh, you know, I'm sure we can, we can try to encourage Scott to uh, make that happen. So, yeah, well, we're, yeah. You know, we're excited to do the show and, uh, and uh, um, you know, it's, I mean, it's tough when you have, you know, eight or 900 different SKUs, oh. you know, which, which ones do we yeah. want to bring? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and it was, you know, it's, it was a discussion uh, over the last couple of weeks because we've already kind of, you know, set it up and decided how we're going to do it. And, uh, um, you know, but we could change if yeah. somebody really feels strongly. See what happens. Uh- yeah. Well, you mentioned earlier how sometimes the feedback from social media and things like that influence uh, Absolutely. influence things. So, well, I'm sure you'll give me this opportunity, yeah. but I'll do it now anyway. You know, I mean, I encourage everybody to, to follow us on social media. Mm-hmm. Check out our website. Another part of our uh, uh, thing that we, we're also going to be coming out with a new website probably. Oh. I'm not sure the time frame on that. Okay. It's, we're just, just now getting started, but uh, we're pretty excited about that because uh, um, it'll, it'll hopefully make a better experience for both consumers as well as dealers. But um uh, but you know, follow us and and interact with us. Uh, we're we're not a big cold company that uh, uh, that isn't going to respond to you and that isn't going to uh, uh, you know listen to you. We we you know we're as I mentioned earlier, we you know we're we're only as good as our as our customers. And uh, um, and if our customers don't like our products, we're going to have a big problem. And uh, uh, and so we want to we want we are looking for fun ideas and looking for uh, for uh, criticism because uh, um, that's that's what we need to get to be a better better company. Sure, and I'll make sure that you know a link to your website, a link to your Instagram, and your other spots are in the description. So listeners, you can either search Body Solid or you can just click on the description and click those direct links to find them. Scott, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure, uh, and I uh, really enjoyed it. And I. Uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe we'll do it again in a couple of years and see if we, if, if any of our yeah. discussion made, made sense. Yeah. yeah, see how it all <laughs> shakes out. <laughs> exactly. All right. Take care. Thank you. Big thanks to Scott for jumping on not one, but two Garage Gym radio podcasts. You can head to the link in the description to find out more about Body Solid, or you could head to Home Gym Con and see their booth because Scott and Body Solid will be there in French Lick the last weekend in April 2024. If you don't have tickets for Home Gym Con just yet, use code VINTAGE to save yourself a little cash and to help out the channel. Code VINTAGE at www.homegymcon.com. Dot com. Thanks for listening. Please like, subscribe, and all that happy stuff. Drop a comment. It really helps the algorithm in some kind of mystical way. This is Rob. I'll see you next time.